Good evening. Welcome for Healing for Today. This is Apostle Potters out of Gainesville, Georgia. We're so delighted to be in your homes teaching the Word of God. Thank God for a new year. 2016, God is doing some powerful things. If you notice on the broadcast, we've done some things differently this year. Uh, we're now healing for today because I believe there is a greater revelation of the healing power of God that is coming into the lives of the people of God. With that in mind, God is going to do some powerful things in these last days as we are preparing for consecration and getting our minds and flesh under control. God is going to do some things relatively to healing. Uh, one of the things I've really been thinking about as it relates to the healing power of God, the Bible talks about uh, over in Acts, the 10th chapter, verse 38, how God has anointed Christ, uh, who was anointed by Holy Ghost, uh, who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed uh, by the devil, for God was with him. And so those things are very important. And so I just want to make sure that you are aware of Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. One of the things I want you to think about, there was a special anointing that came from God upon Jesus. If you study the life of Jesus, uh, he was the greatest apostle that ever lived. I believe he walked in all five offices. What I mean by that, the five-four ministry, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teachers. I think that he had unlimited power. I believe that the nine gifts spoken in 1 Corinthians flowed through him. And one particular of those gifts was the gifts of healing. And so there's going to be a greater revelation of the healing power of God in these last days. Satan knows that his time is short. He knows that he doesn't have much time to do what he needs to do. So he is intensifying his arsenal to try to come out against the saints of God, particularly uh, in the area of sickness and disease. Uh, the Bible says in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus. One thing you have to realize, there's an anointed for healing. Uh, anointed means there's an empowerment that comes from the Holy Ghost that empowered a man or a woman uh, to do what he or she could do, uh, to function in the capacity uh, of the office that they are functioning in. Particularly, the Bible said God anointed uh, Jesus uh, with the Holy Ghost who went about doing good. And the Bible said he healed all who were oppressed. Now, one thing I want you to think about, because sickness is an oppression. When you think about it, when you talk about oppression, you're talking about uh, when the mind is under great pressure, uh, when the mind has gone through great turmoil. Uh, the Bible said he healed those who were oppressed. Many times when you think of oppression, we think of uh, uh, physical oppression, but sometimes there's what I call mental oppression. And so the Bible said he healed. So there is a, a, a anointing that is designed by God to heal people uh, mentally. There is an anointing that is designed by God to heal people spiritually. So the Bible says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost who went about doing good, healing all. Notice the Bible said he healed all. He healed all who were oppressed. So we see that Satan is the oppressor. Oppressor meaning that he uses whatever he can to oppress people. He doesn't matter. He doesn't care what he normally uses. He just wants to oppress you. Uh, the design is to immobilize you so that you're not able to function at the capacity that God wants you to function. And so the Bible says how God anointed, how God anointed, or how God equipped Jesus with an ability so that he will minister a power of God to people that were oppressed. So when you're talking about this great move of God, particularly in the area of healing, the reason it's happening is because too many people are being oppressed. They're oppressed by the devil, uh, particularly those that are not born again, those that are born again, those that are not Christians are being oppressed, those that are Christians are being oppressed. And so how many people know the world needs an answer? They need someone who can be anointed like Jesus is to bring a message of truth relatively to healing. And so the Bible said he sent his word and healed them. So when the word of God comes, truth always comes. It brings light. What light does, it exposes. What light does, it gives understanding uh, to that which may not have understanding. And I believe it all in my heart, the enemy has tried to take away uh, uh, from the body of Christ the revelation of healing. And because of that, people have been more sick today 
than there were maybe 10 or 15 years ago. Well, why is that? Because I believe the truth of healing uh, has been altered in the body of Christ by Satan, who was designed now to try to get us away from what God is doing. And so when we're talking about the message of healing today, I want you to think about not only is he talking about spiritual healing, he's talking about physical healing. He's talking about mental healing. Well, what's that designed to do is to get you away from the oppression or to get you away from the oppressor. Now, notice here, there is what we call the oppression, which is the after effects of the thing that's trying to oppress you. Then we have what we call the oppressor. Well, the Bible says in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all them that were oppressed. They were oppressed by the what? The oppressor. Well, who was the oppressor? Satan. So you see, Satan comes to oppress you. He doesn't care what he used to oppress you. Sickness, disease, poverty, lack, so forth and so on, he uses that to oppress you. Well, the Bible said, we shall not be ignorant of Satan's devices or the wiles or the schemes or the tactics that the enemy uses. We understand that these are diabolical schemes that are designed to try to get you in bondage and try to get you wrapped out of them. The Bible talks about to be wise as a serpent, but yet harmless as a dove. And so what the enemy tries to do is to oppress you in your mind because once you've been oppressed in your mind, then you're not able to be free to do what God wants you to do. So I declare today that you're going to be freeing your mind, particularly with the truths of God's Word relative to healing. And so he said, God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all, all ALM. Because in society today, you'll hear uh, that people don't believe in healing, particularly sometimes even in the church. You'll hear that people say, well, you know, that, that message of healing uh, 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 left so many years ago, or when the great generals or some that I'm thinking of by name, or Roberts, or William Seymour, or John Lee G. Lake, or uh, Catherine Kuhlman, uh, 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 different ones who had a notable uh, experience of the power of God. I believe God is rest restoring it back to the body of Christ, and I believe it's coming back from unlikely sources in these last days. So it's not by coincidence or even accident that you're watching the broadcast, uh, because I believe that that God is trying to get a truth back to the body of Christ and not that the truth ever left, but there'll be a greater emphasis on healing in these last days. Why? Because you can just look at the world and realize people are hurting. We, we, we got to understand that our people are hurting in these last days. There's so much going on. So they're hurting physically, emotionally. And how many people know if you hurt emotionally, that can turn into physical sickness? And we all know that uh, people are stressed out. They're running here and there. And because of stress, that can cause physical sickness. So I believe not only, my God, I sense that, not only does God want to heal you spiritually, physically, but he wants to heal you emotionally. If you look at the woman in the Bible, the Bible says that, when she was, uh, uh, the woman especially who had the issue of blood, and the Bible talks about that she came out of her house because uh, uh, she, she heard about a man called Jesus. And the Bible talks about uh, that she spent all that she had. Notice how sickness and disease robbed her financially. See, when we're talking about healing, I believe that God needs to heal your finances. See, see we don't want to just put healing of physical bodies. God wants to heal you financially. Because of a physical sickness and disease that the woman had, the Bible talks about she had an issue of blood, uh, meaning that uh, 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 there was an incurable blood disease or the blood never dried up. So there were consistently issues that she had uh, uh, as a female gender there. And so there was something going on with that. And she went to the doctor. Her desire was to be healed. But if you notice in a particular passage of Scripture, the Bible says that the physicians couldn't do anything about it. Now, I was going record to say this, uh, that I'm not against physicians. Uh, I believe in physicians. I believe in the medical field. But I believe more of in divine healing than I do natural healing. I believe that God wants to heal you. I believe God can heal you without you having to take any medicine. Uh, I, I believe that God can heal you with your, uh, without you even having to have surgery. Uh, why do some people take medicine and take surgery? Uh, I believe God will honor them right where they are. But I believe God's best is divine healing according to the Word of God. So she went to the medical profession, what most folks do today. And what's happening in my time, 
there's so much sickness and disease that are going out there where the medical profession don't have the answer to it. And I think what's happening with all of my heart is this. God is trying to show people that even though the medical field is out there, most folks are trusting more than a doctor than they are to Jesus. Because if you notice in the Bible, he refers to as the great physician. Wouldn't it be very strange uh, or, or ironic that, that this system, just like the system the world is really going down for us financially wise, I think the medical system is going down. There's so much stuff going on with the medical field. And people got to really trust God now, man. I mean, particularly in the area of their healing. Uh, uh, it's amazing how when things happen in the natural, people's minds really gravitate back over to what it needs to be. I just believe God is using uh, what the enemy meant for our evil to turn around for our good. I believe he's changing the hearts and the minds of the people to get their mind back on divine healing uh, because the profession uh, 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 people can't do it. You know, they try it, but they just don't have the answer. Because know what the Bible talks about? That this woman went to the doctor and she spent all she had. And she spent all she had, and then she, could get, she, could, she did not get any better. So it means that her natural physical money that she had going to the doctor, they still didn't have the answer. And notice that they tried. So I'm saying we're not discrediting uh, the natural medical field, but they tried, but they couldn't do it. So what did she have to do? She had to go to a higher source. I'm saying this because many of you may have gone to the doctor, and you're taking medicine, and it's not working for you, okay? Or you, you're doing this, and they tell you, okay, if you lose a little weight, you know, you can get your diabetes under control, okay? And it's still not working for you. Or you're doing this and that, and it's still not working for you. And if you take the medicine, it's still not working for you. Well, what, what's happening? I'm trying to let you know there's a better way to do this thing. That's what I'm saying. And it comes to the healing power of God. So the Bible says she spent all she had. Uh, many physicians, okay? But what happened? She had to come to a point in her life that says, you know what? I have to go to a higher source. That's what I'm saying today. When there's a revelation of the healing power of God in these last days, God is saying, come back to me relatively to the great physician. He is the one who made your body. He knows all about your body. He knows your organ, your tissue, your blood cell. He knows how everything functions in your body. God knows that. So what we need to do when there is a defect in the product, you go back to the manufacturer. Is that correct? I mean, if I buy an a, a iPad tablet, and it's something that's going on with that tablet, and it's not functioning at the capacity it needs to function, or it needs an upgrade, then guess what? The manufacturer always tell me, bring it back to them, because they know more about their product than maybe a third-party uh, third vendor. Well, what I'm, Jesus is saying this, listen, you went to the third-party vendor of the physician. They, they couldn't do it, okay? They tried. They really did. But guess what? It didn't work. Or if it is working, it's causing you to go through all other type of changes. But what I'm saying here today, come back to the manufacturer as it relates to divine healing. So the Bible talks about, so she spent all she had, glory to God. And so she went to the physicians. They couldn't do it. But the Bible said she heard. What did she hear? She heard about Jesus. There was a truth of the message pertaining to healing. Okay? She heard a truth. That's why the Bible says you should know the truth, and the truth shall, well, come on now, you know it, make you free. That's why we have to know truth in God's word. Uh, so once I know truth, truth gives me understanding. It gives me revelation. Truth uh, in God's word opened my mind that I can think on another level that I've never thought about it before. So when I know truth, which is Jesus, he expands my capacity to receive from him. And so the Bible says she heard about Jesus or she heard about truth. Well, what was the truth? She heard that he was anointed. She heard that he had divine power to heal her. I'm telling you, when people get desperate enough to want to be healed, they will go after it. I always tell people there's something I tell in the area. It's how bad you want it. It's how well you pursue. It's how well you go after it. It's how well you, if, if you got a truth that you see. I'm so glad that the woman, the woman that's in the scripture did not stay home and die. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that she did say, you know what? I spent all that I had, so you know what? I'm going to sit here and die. Or oh, I guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to pray a little longer and sit here and die. I'm so glad she got up. See, some people don't get up. 
They stay right where they are. And they said, okay, God, uh, notice this. Jesus didn't even come to our house. She heard. See, sometimes many of us are waiting for Jesus to come to your house. When are you going to come to his house? When are you going to come after him? When are you going to come after somebody that got truth that you need to hear? When are you going to come? See, we wait for them to come to us. Jesus didn't come to her. She heard. She heard through another source that he was passing through the town. Okay? If you look at the scripture, he didn't even know she, I mean, from the logical, natural perspective, he didn't know she was there. Of course, we know he was God and God knows all things, but he was 100% man, yet 100% God. But notice, uh, he, the scripture said he wasn't coming to her house. He was passing through the town, but she heard about a man called Jesus. She heard. So she heard that, man, you know what? First of all, I'm sick. I spent all that I have. Uh, I, I can't sit here and die. I got to go find something. I got to find something. I'm going to go after this. No, she went after this. Well, let me pause just for a moment. The Bible says in Matthew 5, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. How hungry you are will determine your level of going after. That, it's simply point. I always tell people that. If you're not hungry, you're not going to go after it. You're not going to go after it. So, so my thing is, if you, I'll, t- I can, I'll see your hunger through your pursuit. My God. I'll see your hunger through your pursuing. See, Jesus saw her faith through her pursuing. When she pursued, I, when the Bible talks about, she said, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I'll know I'll be made whole. And so the Bible talks about when she came after him, pressed through the crowd. So there were many obstacles. There were many obstacles through her pursuit. Most folks pursue as long as it's comfortable, when it becomes uncomfortable, when things go, then they stop pursuing. They run. They, they get away. But notice the Bible talks about that even in her pursuing, she had obstacles. So don't think because you pursue, you won't have obstacles. I mean, things are going to come up. But guess what you do? She wasn't moved by it. She wasn't distracted by it because Satan always throws the distraction. And even the people who were there, notice that, they were coming to get the same thing. But notice that, they were considered an obstacle or a distraction because you got all of these people. Remember, you got the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who just come to town. And so he had uh, throngs and throngs of people trying to get to him. And notice here, all of a sudden, she has to come out of her house. She's walking down the, uh, uh, the, the path, the dusty road to get to where Jesus is. All these people around. Can you imagine how much distraction it is? And then the Bible talks about she had to press through the crowd. So notice this. These were obstacles that stopped her or tried to stop her from getting her healing. So when people talk about, I want from God, how bad do you want it? Are you going to pursue? What, what are you doing? What, are you going to pursue? Are, are you going to allow this distraction this obstacle in this situation to stop you from pursuing? She didn't do that. Most folks would have stayed home and died. She did not. She made up in her mind and said, listen here, regardless of what I got to face, regardless of the obstacle, yes, it's going to get hard. God never meant for it to be easy. Satan would try to make it hard. But your pursuit to get what you need has to be the forefront of your mind. And that's one thing that I understand this. When I pursue, when I go out, regardless of the obstacle. So notice that she had all of these obstacle situations. And unfortunately, the obstacle were the people. And they were not trying to be obstacle to her by no means because they were trying to get something from Jesus themselves. But notice here, she had to press through. And the Bible talks about she pressed through the crowd. Press is a powerful word uh, because we, if the Bible used the word press, he had to use the word press because there had to be some type of resistance. I mean, you don't say I press if there's no resistance. Uh, so he pressed, she pressed, meaning there were resistance, obstacles, everything in her way. She could have stayed in the house and say, you know what, it's too many people around Jesus. I, I'm not coming. You know, if Jesus wants me to be healed, he'll just come to my house. You hear people say, if it's the Lord's will, he'll do it. Let me tell you something. First of all, it's already God's will. But until you pursue, until you come after, until you do it, it won't happen. And that's what's going on right now. People don't pursue. They don't go after it. I, I, and so what happened is healing can't come to you. Deliverance can't come. So whatever you're trying to pursue, you got to go after it. You got to make a decision. You got to make up in your mind and say, listen, I don't care the obstacles. I don't care the situation going on. I'm going out regardless of what's going on. I'm going to pursue. I'm going to go after this thing. I'm going to do what God says. I need to get the truth because there's a truth 
that's going to set her free. Notice the Bible said, so when she pursued, when she went after, when she, regardless of the, the trial uh, and, and the distractions that were going on right there, notice she pursued, she, 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 she went after that. And because she went after that, the Bible says she touched the hem of his garment. And what happened? Virtue. Healing came out. And what it is, the Bible said she felt in her body and God made her whole, W-H-O-L-E. The word whole, we get the word wholeness, nothing missing, nothing broken. I believe not only God healed her physical body, but he restored her finances. So you have to understand this. God is trying to restore you. He's trying to get some things back to you. You're definitely listening for healing for today. My time is just definitely already up. I'm tell, I, I really sense the anointing of God and some revelation that God is doing. Truth of God's Word. Uh, if you're watching this broadcast, you can also view this broadcast at www.clintonpotters.org, uh, which is our website that talks about healing for today because healing for today uh, is a supernatural revelation that God gave me. I believe you can heal, be healed today. I believe while you're watching me, whether you're watching from the iPhone, Android, if you're watching on television in your local city or your local country, uh, that Jesus has the ability to heal you. I, I, I believe with all of my heart that it's not by coincidence that you're watching us or even listening us through audio right now. God wants you well. So at this particular time, I need you to put your hand on that part of your body that it's not functioning right. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those uh, that are watching and listening to this broadcast, whether it's city, state, or country that they're in, God. I, I pray, Lord God, that the power of God will heal, bring back to life. I command heart to function right, blood pressure to be normal. I command sugar to be normal. I curse sickness and disease. I break every negative word that was spoken over them uh, that was not according to the word of God. God, we thank you for freedom in the spirit of God. I thank you. Eyes are being healed. I think ears are, are, are popping open. I think that the dumb is speaking. God, I thank you, Lord God, uh, that test results will be normal. God, we thank you for that. We bind a fear that will come in and try to be a taskmaster to try to manipulate and bind God. We break his power over the lives of the people. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. I, I know you sense the power, God. I, I do too as well. I know. Uh, one of the things I want you to do before we end, uh, uh, we do have an email address called clinpottersministries at gmail.com. It's, it's an email address that I would like to uh, the announcer is going to put up on the screen. And so you can email us. Because why I want you to email? I want to hear the testimony of what God's doing. We call it healing for today. Uh, not healing for tomorrow. Healing for today. Meaning that God wants to get you healed. He wants you healed. Uh, our website is www.clintonpotters.org. Well, before we leave the air, uh, very important thing I want you to think about in 2016. Pray about becoming what I call a CPM partner. A CPM partner are individuals who believe with all their heart uh, that God has called them to support our ministry. Uh, CPM partners are individuals that will seek God uh, about an amount that they will need to sow uh, on a monthly basis. It's not an amount too big and definitely not an amount too small that you want to put in your heart to sow. As you do that, amen, we do have information on our website that will give you more information about a CPM partner, and I believe with all of my heart uh, that as you hook up to us and connect with us, I believe that's what's on us, will definitely get on you. And I'm telling you, I walk in divine healing. I believe it, uh, not only from the natural uh, of it, but I believe spiritually that God wants you healed. And so I want you to think about this today. Jesus wants you well. He definitely do. We love you so much. So remember, God wants you well. God bless you.